uh, is uh, representing uh, kinematics of bus. This equal. This is uh, the model. Finally, you can see the model. Not like this. Right. After design the mathematical model, uh, we can see the more better according to the mathematical model. Then why we need this uh, model? Especially uh, with, before do attempt this uh, movement pattern, so we can predict the, uh, his movement pattern based on this mathematical model. So all kinematics, I will provide the portion and also player. You have to prepare your entire body for this movement pattern according to these readings. And also we can do the corrections on the spot with these readings. This gov Chinese government now includes 64 players. Before this research, they have only 4 players. Now 64 players available in China. Yeah, and also we can observe the kind of uh, movement pattern of bars and uh, shoulder uh, movement patterns. Likewise, a lot of uh, Kinematics and kinetics we can observe using this biomechanical uh, model. So I think uh, time is over. I, I will uh, stop from here. If you have any doubts, we can uh, discuss uh, further. Thank you very much.
And at the same time, I would like to thank the organizing committee to providing an opportunity to speak about this poorly studied field in Sri Lanka about mushrooms. But, but most of the studies on mushrooms are carried out in China, basically in China, because China is the main agent which produces and exports mushrooms. But even though we are having a vast diversity of mushrooms, still Sri Lanka lags behind. And I would like to take your attention on recent studies and recent research that we conducted in China and Sri Lanka about Sri Lankan mycota and Chinese mycota. Right. So we know with the increasing population by 2050, we expect the population to be growth up to 9.8 billion and at the same time we expect that with the increase of population the requirements or the essential that is needed by the community would be increased. So among them the food requirement or the protein requirement of the communities are expected to be raised and but with the prevailing resources that we depend for the protein requirement is basically for on livestock production and some kind of cereal production and we uh, get fulfilled our protein requirement based on some kind of other agricultural crops. But at the same time that we should know, these kind of productions uh, significantly contribute for the greenhouse gas emissions and utilize a vast amount or the vast range of land and water which are limited resources for our country. Therefore, most of the scientists, researchers and experts in the field of sustainability suggest that mushrooms are one of the crops or additives which could help to protect Earth because mushrooms most of the time depends on agricultural waste. If I take you some examples, if we want to cultivate mushrooms, you can just use the leftovers of agricultural centers. As an example, you can easily you can easily use paddy straw, cow dung, and the fecal matter of old industry. Uh, some kind of house examples for coffee house, almond house, uh, some uh, cotton house and sometimes uh, the leftovers of the timber corporations, timber industry, uh, that means different types of sawdust material that you produce to grow mushrooms. So you have no necessity in order to acquire substrates for mushroom as you do for other kinds of crops. So you can easily use leftovers from the other agricultural sectors and at the same time because of the vertical stacking patterns of the vertical stacking of uh, facility of the mushroom cultivation limited limits the necessity of a land area that we have to utilize. Therefore, the deforestation can be minimized through this kind of cultivation patterns. And at the same time, mushrooms need a little amount of water because we expect only 50 to 70 percent of moisture in each grow bags if you are cultivating different types of mushrooms and you have to use misting systems which provide only the just to maintain the moisture content depending on different species that we cultivate. And the other thing that the carbon dioxide emission from the mushroom cultivation units are very limited or very low when compared to other crops or other cultivations. Therefore, sustainability experts guarantee and they approve the cultivation systems of mushrooms on any kind of species, rather other crops, if we need to maintain sustainability. So, now you can see here what I have explained, the utilization of water, utilization of land, utilizing other substrates, and, uh, how, and about the carbon dioxide emission, and the main advantage that we could obtain is mushrooms are excellent sources of nutrition with both edible and therapeutic properties. Even though we have left this field behind, even having a vast diversity in Sri Lanka, still we have no any kind of therapeutic treatments 
that is based on mushrooms found in Sri Lanka. All the therapeutic treatments that are doing in Sri Lanka is taken from Chinese technology or Chinese scientists. But uh, even for today, we have more than 25,000 species of mushrooms in Sri Lanka with both edible and medicinal properties. But only, but only about uh, 2,000 species of mushrooms have been identified with standard protocols. So mushrooms come from kingdom fungi. That means basically they are members of kingdom fungi. And they are classified under different criteria because uh, depending on their morphology, their anatomy, their physiology, and their uh, nutritional patterns, and the substrates that they, that they grow, but uh, still we have no specific pattern or we still we have no any ecological studies that is conducted in Sri Lanka to classify our mushrooms and to identify the mushrooms. So before uh, I go for the explanations on Sri Lanka in my quota, I would like to take your attention on the diversity of mushrooms rather than describing them. Uh, Right, so before I move to the video, I should be very really thankful for the uh, person who provided this video, one of our collaborators, Mr. Stephen Exford and his team. So this is on uh, different mushroom or different mushroom species uh, with both edible and medicinal properties. Because some of the mushrooms that I'm going to display here hold both edible and medicinal properties. So it will also describe the diversity of different mushrooms and the diversity of different substrates that they grow. This is a kind of very common mushroom, Mycena lania, a mushroom with a cosmopolitan distribution. And this is a kind of marasmia species, a septotrophic mushroom, very common in almost all the tropical countries. You can see how the parasitic mushrooms are grown on that. And Cranipelis species, one of the most colorful mushrooms, but this one just appears in purple color. But most of the Cranipelis species appears with vibrant colors. And this is a mushroom that is recently identified from Australia, a Copernopsis species, described in Originally described from Australia in 2021. Yes, this is kind of a significant one. Mycena chlorophyll, a biolomincin mushroom. It's because of the interaction of luciferine and luciferase. Yes, this is another biolomincin, another mushroom that appears with Biolumicin properties, Amphalotus species. And this is originally described from Sri Lanka. We have several Amphalotus species described from here. And also Mycena chlorophyll, which the one we previously described. And Crapidotus, Salmani color. And after medicinal mushrooms. Several species, one of the stinking mushrooms, because of the spore mass they bear. We have several Asara species in Sri Lanka, but appears in white color, different morphology, and our Kyularia species, one of the world's popular, very popular medicinal mushroom. And that is how the mycelia is growing on the wood substrate. Thousands of tiny hyphae that, that creates mycelia, which enhances production of big bodies, like forest species. Still, we have no any reports about glowing forest species in Sri Lanka. And all of mycelia species from family Physalacriaceae, it contains most of the medicinal mushrooms. Again, Marasmia species.
Marius Mills holds a cosmopolitan distribution, and Sabatadama species. Sabatadama also, we have no any reports about this one from Sri Lanka yet, but we believe that within rainforest processes it might exist. Septotroma species very close one to Gymnopyla species and you can see some parasitic mushrooms growing on Septotroma and which cause the decay of Septotroma species covering all the marasmias and Septotroma by the parasitic mushrooms. And this is lion's mane mushroom, a very valuable edible and edible mushroom with a lot of therapeutic values. China is the main exporter of lion's mane mushrooms. So now we have started some studies and research on lion's mane mushrooms in Sri Lanka. We have success with spawn production. But the problem is we have to provide artificial environmental conditions for the production of lion's mane mushroom. Because this is a terrestrial mushroom, not a tropical mushroom. So we have to provide artificial environment because this grows under uh, 15 or 16 degrees of Celsius. So we cannot have outdoor systems to cultivate lion's mane mushroom. Very valuable, very expensive mushroom in the international market because of the therapeutic values. Alright, so that is where we talk about the global mushroom production and the diversity of mushrooms everywhere. But if we focus on Sri Lankan mushrooms or Sri Lankan mycota, as I told you previously, we have estimated that to nearly 25,000 species of mushrooms exist in Sri Lanka, including most of the edible and, and uh, medicinal mushrooms. But unfortunately, we have records about only 2,000 species of mushrooms. And, uh, with recent research, we could introduce two different mushroom species, which one is a Termitomyces species and the other one from the genus Candaliomyces. So Sri Lankan mycota, if we introduce the Sri Lankan mycota, it dates back to 1980s. That means most of the people who studied Sri Lankan mycota was foreign scientists, basically British people and some Dutch people. But in late 90s, some of the Sri Lankans who were, introduced, who were interested about the glory of the country's mushroom diversity started studying mushrooms. But even for today, we have those reports only with morphological identification characteristics. We have no any evidence to prove the species names at least because we do not have any specimens which have been collected and sent to UK in previous years. So it is really expensive to have those from the Fungarians and to have them in Sri Lanka. Therefore, because of these scattered studies and the duplicated entries, and because of the inconsistencies of the synonyms that people use, still it is quite challenging to come to an estimation about the mush mushrooms or the mycota in Sri Lanka. So I should actually recall Professor Karnaratna who took tremendous effort to bring out or to animate the mushroom uh, culture or the studies about mushrooms in Sri Lanka because if he did not initiate some work here in Sri Lanka, then even for today, we could not have reached at least this success. So after, nine, after uh, 1980s, in 2023, we introduced two new mushroom species to the world from Sri Lanka. So the first one is Termitomyces sri lankensis, and we could introduce them, and we could prove that it is a new species to the world with morphological identification, that means with taxonomic treatments, and at the same time with phylogenetic analysis. So Termitomyces is a genus that bears 
hundreds of species, but in Sri Lanka we can find only four species. <coughs> so, Termitomyces microcarpus, Termitomyces hemi, and Termitomyces erythysis are those species. In general practice, we call this Velihato. This is a very uh, delicious mushroom and a mushroom that bears a lot of therapeutic values. But unfortunately, even for today, we have no any treatments based on these kind of mushrooms, even though Chinese people, Thai people, and most of the uh, countries which use the developed technology with mushrooms use these kind of mushrooms for their treatments and to make different medicine. So, development of uh, Termitomyces species up to the commercial cultivation is quite challenging because Termitomyces species run a symbiotic relationship with termites. When the termites collect termitomyces spores and when they deposit in the termite nests, so with their adequate rain and with adequate nitrogen concentration with lightning, termitomyces mushrooms starts growing. Therefore, there's still there's no way of uh, creating a platform for to maintain this symbiotic relationship artificially. That's why even China, uh, even though China and Japan tried several times to cultivate termitomyces species, this was failed. So therefore, uh, termitomyces species, even though we find a natural environment under different names with different species, this has become a challenging task to bring up to the commercial level of production. And the second species we introduced is Candaliomyces ruminensis. So the, the mushroom specimen was detected from the premises of Rumania University. That's why the specific epithet is given as ruminensis. So the, this is the first ever Candaliomyces species reported from Sri Lanka. So Candaliomyces genus usually contain around 25 to 30 species. But this is the first time that we detect Candaliomyces from Sri Lanka. So still, for those two species, we are running some experiments to investigate whether there are any more therapeutic values or edible properties that we can grow and that we can bring up to the commercial level because we have already preserved the cultures of these new species. So we have the capability of producing mushroom spawns if necessary. So that's why these uh, mushroom species actually, actually they, there's a huge necessity of investigating for their economical values. Right. Now if we move to the uh, industrial level, that means aside from the research, if we try to understand the current status of the mushroom cultivation in Sri Lanka, still we are at the bottom. We are at a very primary level because we have just five to uh, six species, if we find five to six varieties in markets. Uh, in 1968, uh, this, uh, in 1986, mushroom cultivation was introduced to Sri Lanka under uh, UN funds as a household business to improve the uh, economy of rural. But even but by that time, there were only four species. But even in 20, 2023, still we are having six species in the market. Majorly, the other species that we call oyster mushrooms in general practice, uh, American oyster, pink oyster, which is called the uh, Pleurotus digema, and king oyster mushrooms, and milky mushrooms, and then button mushrooms, and lentinulae daughters. Lentinulae daughters is the shiitake mushroom, but this is a ten, this is also a temperate mushroom, therefore we need artificial environmental conditions in order to uh, cultivate shiitake mushrooms. So still we are having six commercial varieties in Sri Lanka, even though we are having a diversity of 25,000 species of mushrooms in Sri Lanka. Now, if we move to this kind of wild mushroom species, the first one is Volvariella volvasiae, what we call the in Pidruhadu, in general practice, right? But uh, some people call this uh, paddy mushroom, but the correct scientific name is Volvariella volvasiae, a very delicious mushroom, but 
In Sri Lanka, at least we don't have spores of this mushroom to cultivate. And the second one is Schizophyllum commune, a very delicious mushroom, a medicinal mushroom. Even the Volvariella volvasia is a medicinal mushroom. So several studies were implemented to cultivate Schizophyllum commune, and it was a success of some extent. Now uh, some farmers and some institution, institutions are conducting some research on studying uh, Schizophyllum commune. And we have the other one, Pyrotus gigantea, that is also a medicinal mushroom, medicinal mushroom with number of uh, varieties we are having here. In general practice, people call these in villages Uruhadu, but even though some people try to produce many produce spores of this one, still we have no any proper substrate detected to cultivate Pyrotus gigantea. And our Cularia species, which we call uh, jelly mushroom or ear mushroom. It is also a mushroom that is carrying a lot of therapeutic values. In China, this is one of the uh, mushrooms people take into their diets as a medicinal mushroom. And the other one, Ganoderma, which we call reishi mushroom, the mushroom the, of the king in the medical field in China, because they use Ganoderma species in order to treat different types of diseases in traditional Chinese medicine. And the other one is Pleurotus tuberatum. It is also a wild mushroom that contains a lot and lots of therapeutic properties. And here I have uh, shown you a picture of mushroom buds. This is called Macrocyte gigantier. So this is the latest mushroom that we could introduce in 2021. As a, as a mushroom with edible and medicinal properties. So for the first time we found this species from Piliandala, Sri Lanka and uh, after that uh, we identified this mushroom species and we found a proper substrate for that and here we, here, uh, we have prepared These are the fruit bodies that we have prepared with the mushroom spawns produced from this new variety. So still this is at experimental level, macrocyte gigantier that is known as lump and brown. So since I uh, have just a limited time, I would like to uh, take your attention on the, about the advantages of having different types of mushroom species as subtrophic mushrooms, uh, symbiotic mushrooms and parasitic mushrooms in the environment because they act as strategies against human diseases. So these are the benefits that we can have through mushrooms, lion's mane mushroom as I described previously. So we have already tried cultivating this one and the spawn production is on the way for this one. But unfortunately the people who try to cultivate lion's, mushroom, lion's mane mushroom should have artificial conditions for this. And reishi mushroom or Ganoderma lucidium we call it scientifically that produces different types of medicines using Ganoderma specifically mixed with coffee and chocolate beverages and turkey tail mushroom, tremendous versicolor so this helps to for the stimulation of the cytokine production and to increase natural killer cells and attack against cancers and mushrooms on the other hand enhance the forestry and some other crops because mushrooms helps absorption of nutrients through the soil for the different crops and vegetation. And these are the different food and beverages based on mushrooms. And even though we have not paid any attention, while having a vast diversity, these are the major sectors that other countries pay attention on mushrooms. 
So finally, I would like to mention that these kind of natural resources are still poorly examined and investigated in Sri Lanka. There are a lot of therapeutic values actually, but still we have no at least a single drug that is prepared based on mushrooms from Sri Lanka, even though having a vast diversity of 25,000 species. Maybe there are more than 10,000 species of medicinal mushrooms, but still we have no at least a single one. So now the time has come to study on this because as taxonomists we can help you to the, peop for the, to the people who are, in who are interested in therapeutic values and pharmaceutical productions on this. So we invite if anybody is interested in this field, please contact us because we have all the cultures, we have all the sports we have produced on these medicinal mushrooms. boundaries, we have to think about the, uh, the suitable mathematical application. So there are a lot of uh, mathematics, mathematical applications, uh, especially I use uh, Laplace equations uh, that uh, actually uh, success. Yeah, mathematical, using, yeah, yeah definitely. Method, uh, I designed this model uh, using uh, math, uh, math labs. MATLAB, especially human movement analysis software included MATLAB uh, software as well. So if we design the equations according to the degree of freedom, so if 10 degree of freedom means 10 dynamic equations. So according to the di 10 dynamic equations, we can find out the coefficients, the relevant coefficients of the mathematical model. So this coefficient after that we have to uh, use, uh, justify, applying this uh, biomechanical model for the human, other types of human body, height and weight. So therefore we can uh, identify the uh, real coefficients of the dynamic equation. So that is why uh, I went uh, German and all, because German they have uh, different anthropometric uh, measurements. The, the average height is uh, 160, more than 178 centimeters in gymnastics, but in Sri Lanka and uh, China is very low value for the gymnast, 5 feet, uh, 5, 1, likewise, very short. Therefore, we applied this for the German people uh, without uh, inform to them. Then uh, we captured uh, the movement pattern using high-speed cameras, then we 
observe the more uh, coefficient value of the dynamic equations. Finally, we design the model for suitable for any model. Total sample may be thousands. No need. The biomechanical model is no need. Only one player. Use uh, only one accurate player to design the biomechanical model. After that, this model used for the others to uh, observe the validity of the coefficients. Upgrade yeah, upgrade. Yeah, definitely. Because these coefficient values are slightly different with with uh, corresponding to the body height, body weight. Because they are uh, uh, force application, not linear. You know, the, according to the height and weight, uh, this is not linear. It's not linear. Yeah, yeah non linear. So therefore, therefore, we have to identify the range of coefficient values. That's the case. Very, and, uh, very much difficulties we face. So the pattern by pattern, you like to produce a graph. Yeah, graph. That, uh, yeah. yeah. Then finally, we uh, design average common mathematical yeah. model. Yeah. We call biomechanical model for the for the model. Model power process. Yeah, process. Okay. Then we can predict the uh, human uh, movement pattern for any player, any player. because of their sexual morphs and their sexual morphs. So this depends, the variation of the genetic material depends on this. But for mushrooms, of course, there's no doubt that there are the genetic variations that occur in mushrooms. Yes, it's rapidly occurring. That is why sometimes we cannot even confirm the edible species with the first round of uh, cultivation and for the second round sometimes we cannot exactly say yes that this is the exact species that we cultivate previously. Yes, we cannot yes, we cannot actually predict that the solution we can use is we have to go for a DNA analysis, then we can have we can run the phylogenetic analysis, then we can confirm the placement of that species with the other closely related species through a phylogram. Then we can have a correct idea about the species based on that phylogenetic analysis as well as the morphological characteristics. That is the best way if we if we are going to introduce a species to someone because it is not recommended to name the species only with morphological characteristics. Yes. Yeah, that is why when we are exporting, they are asking for a report about the species confirmation. Even for the industry here, now if we are providing mushrooms, herbal mushrooms for nature secrets or other cosmetic production companies, they are asking for a species confirmation report because they want to clarify whether they are having the exact species that they ex import from China. Now we have several companies which produce Ganoderma lucidum, which is a very valuable medicinal mushroom, but they are in a trouble because they have no way of proving that it is Ganoderma lucidum for the cosmetic production companies because they have no facilities for that. 
Actually, I have another question for Dr. Asi. Let's say, by uh, hypothetically speaking, I identify a mushroom species in my backyard, and I want to study it further. How is it? How easy it is to get it authenticated in Sri Lanka? Uh, still, we have no actually a pictorial guide or anything for Sri Lankan mushrooms. Uh, what you can do is just based on the morphological characteristics. You can uh, have a description about the mushroom, that means about the color, about the size, and about the spore print. If you just remove, if you can separate the cap of the mushroom from this type, then you can place it on a A4 sheet or a, any uh, black color paper. Then you can cover the cap of the mushroom with a glass to minimize the disturbance from the wind. Then the spores of the mushroom cap deposits on the paper. Then with that color, you can identify what kind of mushroom. But you should have at least basic knowledge about the mushroom spore characteristics and the basic morphological features if you are going to identify or if you are going to give a name. If you are, at least if you are going to take an idea about what kind of mushroom. Otherwise, we cannot recommend anybody about the species names, about mushroom, because there are a lot of toxic, poisonous mushrooms in the field that is uh, with the same appearance as the edible species. So there's a huge risk if you are using these mushrooms without any idea. Why, why this lack of research in Sri Lanka? Is it like because no one is interested in no like? Is it because they have no knowledge whatsoever? Yes, the main problem was uh, we had no enough technology for that until uh, 2000 and late 90s because there are a lot of uh, mushroom studies and there are some books written on mushroom morphology but if you take them you will identify that they have given these names to mushrooms just referring some mushroom species or the books or the pictorial guides produced from other countries. So how can we say these photos, just by looking a picture, just by matching a picture with a mushroom, this is exactly this is the species we had. Because there are some occasions that mushroom species differentiate from each other with micromorphological characteristics that we cannot see with our naked eye. So we have to go for micromorphological analysis if we are going to identify them. So now we are having some technology up to some extent with uh, molecular biological techniques. But even for today, still there are a lot of constraints. And there are a lot of loopholes that where we go wrong with these different practices and even how much we advise farmers to identify them and go with proper procedures, uh, means misconceptions, disturbs, still disturbs a lot because there are some people who say that we should not eat mushrooms with a ring. I don't know whether you have heard about that. There's a myth. Yes, if there's a ring, they say, yes, that is poisonous mushroom, you should not eat that. But that's totally wrong. There are some mushroom species called Naihatu, fallow species. There are some species very stinging. But Chinese people do eat them. But why Sri Lanka refuse? We don't have any kind of evidence to prove this. So those stories descend from generations to generations and still we believe them. That's the problem. Sorry, sorry. Which, uh, which, which mushroom? Yes. For each mushroom species, now if we are introducing any kind of mushroom species from Sri Lanka or anywhere, we have to provide a report about the nutritional value. But uh, most of the time, people believe all of the mushrooms contain a lot of amount, a lot of protein. But that is not true. There are some mushroom species which contain a lot of protein, and there are some mushroom species which contain a lot of vitamins. And now, if I take you an example, the oyster mushroom species that we usually consume, if you go for a market, you can see the white color mushroom. It, it does not contain a lot of protein. But people believe it contains a lot of protein. If someone say, without searching for anything, people believe that is a problem. But uh, now, 
with the scientific analysis, we have found that there are a lot of edible mushroom species with a lot of protein amount, uh, less lipids in Sri Lanka. When compared to China, because Chinese people, there are uh, nearly 900 edible mushroom species in Yunnan province, China. Within Yunnan province, there are more than 900 edible species. So you can imagine about the diversity. But if they can exploit them, if they can identify them, why we do not, why we do not believe in our diversity? That means we might have more than them, but the problem is people, uh, most of the time the community is not ready to accept that this is a very nutritious and delicious source of food that we have to enhance our food systems. Yes, in mushroom packs you don't see any values of nutrition. So does that mean there's no Yeah, now uh, if uh, the farmers have already registered in Seed Act, they have to register in Seed Act, and uh, if they have registered their business, uh, they have to provide a label, that means with a standard format, but in that format, we don't see any requirements of publishing uh, nutritional values. So there, so there are a lot of things that we have to correct from top to bottom. We cannot blame farmers for that. So the agriculture department of agriculture should take steps to provide these things to people. Then only the community can get an idea about what they are at least what they are purchasing. Now, if I provide you an example. Uh, when we are visiting mushroom farms, we see a lot of grow bags that is contaminated with different types of diseases, aspergillus, trichoderma, uh, rhizopus. So those are appearing in black and green color with more molds with black and green color. But, uh, but we usually advise farmers to remove these grow bags from their grow huts. Even though we advise, they just keep them, they just maintain, because still these contaminated grow bags produce fruit bodies. But ultimately what happens, when the consumers buy these mushrooms from the market, they complain finally, they are getting mushrooms, they consume mushrooms, and they get diarrhea or any kind of bad effect. But that is not because of the mushroom, that is because of the that, uh, disease or the black moles or uh, green moles, and there are toxins that is deposited in mushrooms. So those bad effects are most of the times not because of the mushroom, but because of the bad practices and wrong identifications. What we can do is, being taxonomists, we can help identify these mushroom spaces and we can help with spawn reduction, identification, and culture maintenance, anything. And uh, we don't have at least a single ecological study in Sri Lanka about mushrooms yet, unfortunately. So there's a huge gap that we have to fulfill in the field. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you for the audience to make a fruitful discussion. Uh, I sum up the session. So uh, we need to uh, develop an effective and efficient integrated action plan to achieve sustainable and resilient healthcare system. For that, we need to improve knowledge and skills of the healthcare professionals. Knowledge can improve by introducing new teaching learning methods existing programs. Not only that, research will fill the existing knowledge gaps. The last presentation is the evidence for that. Still, we have existing gaps to fill. So, dear students and young academics, I think you had a, you will have a great opportunity to think about it and to develop, create research studies in the field of uh, mushrooms, medicinal mushrooms. Thank you. Uh,
thank you for participating in this session and glamour this event. Have a good day. One more, uh, Dr. Durari was sending the emails. Her email address is uh, illustrated. Ending of the session, I would like to call upon the chairperson, Professor H. Harshini Paris, to await the mementos and certificates to our distinguished speakers. First, I would like to invite Faculty of Applied Sciences, Department of Sport Sciences and Physical Education, Sabrakuru University, Sri Lanka, to receive the memento. Academy of Sciences, China, and Tropical Microbiology Research 